what can I say? Copite 7 Kimi, one of the most uh, reputable hardware specs leakers, has done it again. He has leaked the specifications for the RTX 5080, the RTX 5090. We're expecting these GPUs to be um, announced slash revealed in uh, CES 2025. Not so far away now. The specifications here, um, absolutely fascinating. Alex, do you want to take up the story? Well, yeah. So I guess the thing we're seeing with the RTX 5090 and RTX 5080 specs um, is with a lot of NVIDIA things, they are changing up internally, like what position, like the internal, like the individual chips in the stack of chips that are usually released from 5090, 5080, 50, uh, 5070, et cetera, going lower. It's changed over the generations from the RTX 2000 series, 3000 series, and RTX 4000 series was even more extreme where there's there's kind of like a large, like the 4090 started getting way bigger than the originally released 4080. And then like in terms of how much power it is. And with the 5090 versus the 5080, we're seeing that gap widen, I would say even more. And I think that's, we can talk a lot about what that means, but I think at least for the people who are buying a 5090, wow, that's great, right? <laughs> it's gonna be a monstrous chunker of a GPU apparently. <laughs> Um, it's going to have 32 gigs of RAM, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's going to have a 512-bit memory bus, which I don't think we've seen from NVIDIA since Volta. Was that like the last time we saw that? I can't remember, but it's certainly um, outrageously large compared it's, to you know, the standard 384-bit bus that generally tends to go on the high-end product. Right. We're seeing ultra-fast memory as well, too. We're seeing a default T TGP here, as in how much power it can potentially use under certain loads, up to 600 watts, which once again, I don't want to read too much into that right now because we saw a lot about the 4090 pre-release about it using a certain amount of wattage that it didn't. Um, and the amount of CUDA cores difference between the 5090 and 5080 is essentially it's doubled, mm -hmm. uh, which I don't know. I kind of like this and I kind of don't. I like this because I think the top end card should probably be a Halo card. Um, but in terms of what the, uh, the 5080 is, depending upon its price point, um, it could represent a, like a, like a, a compressing of the stack below the top end level where we have them using much smaller chips than they did in the past. Uh, instead of using, uh, cut down or turned off versions of the larger chip. Usually it used to be that like the 80 series was the, the largest and, uh, like, what was it like? Um, they usually use like the 104. Is it 102? Like the one, well, uh, the 02 is typically the, the largest 02. chip. Mm -hmm. yeah, then sorry. it goes, then historically it went to the 04 chip, but then they introduced the 03, which generally tends to be, the new 80 series, the way things yeah. are working out, and also the high-end laptop chips. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit worried as a result of this due to the large spec differential and the fact that it is a different uh, chip in general than the 5090 here, according to this leak from Kobay Kimi, um, that we're going to see kind of like what we saw with the 4000 series, but maybe even more extreme, where the 4080 and below are kind of compromised on certain levels to make the choice for the consumer kind of hard to buy. Uh, and I'm also a little worried vis-a-vis -vis the RTX 4080, uh, how much better the 5080 is going to be from it. It apparently has um, like not exactly better specs than the well, 4080 I'm in the way you want it I'm just looking at this table here that um, video cards has put together, which essentially positions the mooted 50 series cards against their 40 series equivalents. And yeah, you're quite right that the, the gap between um, 5090 and 5080 is vast. Um, the 50, the 5080 appears to be a fully enabled uh, GB203 chip, mm -hmm. but uh, it's not the case for the 202. There's um, uh, some CUDA cores disabled there, but it is effectively almost 
twice as many CUDA cores as the yeah. as the fifty eighty, which is Absurd. quite extreme. Um, yes, and obviously you've got double the memory interface, and um, you know gigantic gap in bandwidth, six hundred watts versus four hundred watts. That's that's extreme. Uh, six hundred watts is is kind of nuts. I think. All the 5080 has to do is to match the 4090 effectively and be a good price, right? Which is something that uh, NVIDIA pretty spectacularly failed at for the 80 class uh, with Ada Lovelace. Mm -hmm. um, and even the 4080 Super at $1,000, you know, it can only really justify itself at $1,000 because of the performance differential against the 4090, which is like 1600 uh, beyond, you know, it, the the Halo product does seem to be in a class of its own. It does look like a rerun of that. So the question is really, how much is the 5080 going to cost? Similar to the way the 3080 was a good price, and that therefore defined the value proposition for everything 100%. else going down the stack. That pricing on the 5080, I think, is going to be crucial. Um, I still think, though, that if they are getting like 4090 performance or the mooted 10% plus which might well be, you know, path tracing applications, that kind of thing. Um, it would be pretty awesome. But again, you would have a 90 product that would just be out of this world, mind-bendingly nutso performance levels there. Yeah. You just don't really know, do you? Um, I mean, the gap between 4090 and 4080 in pure performance terms was big, but not as big as the as the specs suggested. Um I'm curious what you make of this, Oliver, because, uh, well, what can we say? It's not so far away now. And, um, yeah, wow. The 5080 looks a little bit anemic for something that is reportedly supposed to be 10% faster than a 4090. But, again, like you said, Rich, that's kind of like up in the air with those pre-release information where people are basically leaking out. Maybe it's 10% faster, but you have no idea what kind of workload that is. Or or even even right. if it's true on its, on its face at all. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think for the 5090, that's maybe a more interesting chip and in that divergence in terms of spec does, you know, is a little bit wide here. Um, but I think maybe they're even approaching like the reticle limit at four nanometers because like even for a 512 bit bus on the chip, I'd assume it would have to be substantially larger than the 4090 just based off of the, the dial out there, which is about 600 millimeters squared. And it just looks like an absolute monster, especially at 600 watts. 512-bit bus, 1.8 terabytes of bandwidth almost there. Um, it's just it's just crazy. Uh, but there's also rumors. I saw some rumors of a like a three gigahertz uh, clock speed in typical operation as well. And if that's true, wow. you're looking at a you know 20% clock bump on top of 30 odd percent more SMs and 70 80 percent ish more bandwidth there. Um, that would be a good way to get a much faster GPU. Again, we don't know a whole lot about the specifics of the hardware outside of that. But yeah, I mean, that sounds like a much, you know, a much more compelling product. But I guess there's some interesting math here with how, how did they get that 50, 80, <laughs> indeed, to 40, 90 level performance, if that is indeed the, the target there, or even higher than 40, 90 level performance. Because if you just do the math on the SMs and the bandwidth and all these different factors, you don't really doesn't really add up to that certainly so no. i guess that's kind of an area where I'm, I'm curious to see what the underlying architecture is doing there that might get it closer but if it is getting close to that 4090 level of performance or indeed even exceeding it that suggests the 5090 is just going to be an absolute stunner so <laughs> that will certainly be very interesting the 5080 side of things it's it's on a new node it the clock speeds should be faster it does have a new mm -hmm. architecture so those are all potential factors that will weigh in its favor that could get you up to that sort of 4090 limit. And I guess you kind of have to do something with the 80 product to, to make it compelling. And if the cell is, okay, this is as fast as a 4090 and it costs this much, that could kind of work, I guess. Mm -hmm. I guess we just don't know. I think the other thing we need to factor in, of course, is that NVIDIA is just going to be unleashing more features. Surely there's going to be some kind of new DLSS technology um, I think it's quite important, though, that the mistakes that were made in Ada weren't aren't being made here, where basically, you know, fame generation was used in benchmarks in non like for like scenarios. I think they did adjust for that, you know, once the super refresh came along. 
But yeah, um, what can I say? That big gap is slightly worrying, though, isn't it? It's yeah. kind of like a rerun of what happened with Ada and more so even. But final thoughts, Alex? 16 gigabytes makes me a little worried for the lower part of the stack, too. Um, I think 12 is comfortable for 1440p gaming, but it doesn't mean always that you'll get things like path tracing plus frame gen at the same time, because frame generation seems to be something that takes up a lot of uh, video memory. And a lot of games with the way they manage video memory, it starts thrashing performance. Uh, that's been a thing that's been reported on multiple times. Uh, I definitely see it when I try and use frame gen on the RTX 4060 often enough that I don't like it. Uh, so I really hope NVIDIA abandons eight gigabytes on their mid range, these lower, I don't even know what to call it anymore. The RTX 4060 class. I really, they had 12 in the 3060, which was a, a strange spec at the time, obviously, but has proven itself the years after. Very fact. useful, yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, I think they got to really push up that mid-range 4000 series. They're probably going to do some other, the, the silly compromises, like the, the half, uh, half the amount of PCIe lanes and stuff like that. I imagine that silliness is going to still be there, but I would really like them to push the VRAM further there because that is the one part where I just do not like the RTX 4000 series is the VRAM allocation to these mid-range GPUs. I think it should be way better. So let's hope that the 16 gigabytes on the the 5080, which is the same as the 4080, uh, is not indicative that the lower parts of the stack are VRAM starved like they were previously. So yeah, that's what I, I hope. Think, I think yeah. you're in for a disappointment, to be honest, Alex. Yeah, I'm in for a disappointment because there's this idea that people who play at 1080p, like games at 1080p can still break eight gigabytes of VRAM um, and sometimes unreasonably so, uh, but also sometimes it's reasonably so. And it prevents you from using the card's features like ray tracing and or frame generation. And those are stickers on the box, you know, f- ray tracing, path tracing, frame generation. And if it can't do that due to the VRAM at its intended resolution, according to NVIDIA, then I think they're kind of making a product that fails on its own at, on its own merits that they're pushing forward. So, yeah. Come on. Okay. The final yeah. Thoughts, I also think that NVIDIA is maybe in a bit of a tough spot there because if you're looking at a 256-bit bus, are you going to go with 16 gigs or 32 gigs for those products, right? Right. Clearly on the 5090 series, that choice seems to be pretty easy because you don't want to have less VRAM than the 4090, even though 32 gigs is uh, kind of a Excessive. ridiculous amount of VRAM, I would say. Uh, but yeah, I think you're in a tough spot there where I don't know that you really want a 5080 with 32 gigs of VRAM, but you don't want 16. But I also heard there were some weird capacities of GDDR7, though, coming down the pipe like some weird kind of like non-symmetric capacities. Mm-hmm. But I don't think those are here yet. But maybe in the future they could do something more funky, like a 24-gig card, but I don't think that's in the, in the cards just yet. 